Hello, hello everyone. Welcome. Come on in. This is Tea and Gemstones, your podcast home for anything and everything to do with jewelry and sparkle. We might talk about the science of a gemstone's color, new designs hitting Instagram, what's the latest red carpet, or the history of epic royal jewels. To take you on all of these auditory explorations is me, your host, I'm Jen. I'm a lifelong sparkle enthusiast who loves to dig deep on topics and entertainingly over-explain. Today's episode is a collision of the psychology of shapes mixed with the history of gemstone design. So let's get started. Humans have been creating personal talismans of jewelry for over 100,000 years. It is how we outwardly display our identity to others, connect to memories, embolden ourselves with strength and happiness. And I humbly submit that there is no piece of jewelry more infused with meaning than an engagement ring. An engagement ring displays a couple's dedication and love to each other, but come on, besides that wonderful stuff, the engagement ring design is an incredibly intimate choice, reflecting the personality of the bride and sometimes the groom too, for the whole world to see. Nowadays, there are infinite choices for tailoring an engagement ring to convey the exact vibe a couple desires, but Let's backtrack through history to see, has it always been this way? What was the first engagement ring shaped like? Well, the first recorded giving of rings to symbolize a commitment to marriage were the Romans. They had the lovely custom of giving women gold bands with little keys attached to them to symbolize the man's ownership over her. Hmm. might be a problematic statement to make in modern times, but I suppose romance was different back then. Our first diamond engagement ring enters history books in 1477, when Archduke Maximilian of Austria publicly proposed to Mary of Burgundy in front of his whole court in Vienna. The proposal was documented in multiple writings and a couple paintings, which is the 15th century equivalent of celebrities having their engagement photos splashed in a magazine. So Mary's ring, this first ring, it's pretty simple. It's a textured yellow gold band with a roundish white diamond set in a thick gold square setting. Following Max and Mary's engagement, diamond engagement rings took off in popularity all the way through to today, with modern-day diamond supply companies like De Beers stoking the flames of desires with ad campaigns like A Diamond is Forever. So, you want a diamond engagement ring, or you just want to buy a diamond. That beautiful, glimmering, glittering rock, it's going to accompany you through literally everything you do in your life, save showering and sleeping. (laughs) What shape and design do you want resting so glamorously on your finger or hanging around your neck? Well, humans love to customize everything, and diamonds come in a wonderful plethora of shapes. Let's talk about them, and maybe you'll discover the new shape that speaks to your sparkly soul. So the very first diamond engagement ring showcased a round cut diamond and well, round cut has reigned supreme as the top stone choice ever since, probably because the round cut is perfectly designed for maximum diamond sparkle. And well, people really like that. The round brilliant design was created in 1919 by a gemologist and mathematician named Marcel Tokowski. He actually presented his 58 facet round design for a diamond as his thesis for his PhD. Facets are the little cuts all over a diamond that give it its shape and its sparkle. The way facets are arranged on a stone make the shape and change the way the stone reflects and absorbs light, AKA how much the diamond will sparkle. Usually more facets mean more sparkle. 
The round cut has 58 facets placed around the circle to make the diamond glitter beautifully. But cutting a rough diamond into a circle shape means a lot of the stone gets wasted, cutting it away to make it nice and round. Because of this, round diamonds are some of the most expensive. That doesn't deter people from buying them though. As of 2015, a whopping 75% of all diamond jewelry featured a round brilliant cut and almost 80% of all engagement rings. It is a classic, traditional, never goes out of style, circles symbolize eternity, never ending, it's perfect for love and marriage. But don't be bored, the round diamond is not so simple and basic as it may seem. There are several interesting variations on this classic circle. The first of the round cut diamonds, the ones in the very beginning, they were called old European cuts. Sometimes you see them listed as OEC. This harkens back to before 1930 when all diamonds were cut by hand. The facets were obviously less precisely placed and could be chunkier, variable, artistic, carrying the mark of their maker. They weren't done by machines, they were done by people. These antique cut stones are now highly prized and they can fetch an even heftier price tag than their modern perfect machine cut equivalents due to their history and their individual uniqueness. No two old European cut diamonds are exactly alike. They're beloved for their unperfectness. But speaking of perfection in round cut, if your personality strives for a mix of classic traditionalism and engineered excellence, you might choose a hearts and arrows round cut. Hearts and arrows is an ultra precise way to cut a round diamond. The cut was created in Japan in the 1980s. Gee, are the Japanese known for being ultra precise? <laughs> This cut requires special tools to allow the gem cutter to create the optical design. The facets are cut in such a way that when you look down at the diamond from the top, you see eight symmetrical arrows. When you look up through the bottom of the diamond, you see eight symmetrical hearts. Hearts and arrows can cost up to three times more than the standard round diamond due to the time and skill required to cut them less than 1% of diamonds are hearts and arrows. But if you want to make your classic traditional round diamond have a little extra something something, you might join the rarefied company of owning a hearts and arrows. The second most popular diamond shape is what I consider the classic opposite of a circle. It's a square. More specifically, it is called a square modified brilliant, but you probably know it by its much more fun nickname, the princess cut. A less refined version of the princess cut was around starting back in the 1960s, but this glittering square really took off in the 1980s. It started when in 1971, two different gem cutters registered new square diamond designs, calling them the Baron and the Profile, respectively. All right. In 1979, a collaborative group of gem cutters registered the Quadrillion Cut. So these names are either boring or a mouthful. And luckily for us, marketing took over and it quickly adopted the princess nickname because the shape was deemed fit for a princess. These sparkly inverted pyramids have a range of 50 to 58 facets, depending on how they're cut, and they are for a modern woman who loves to have a little twist on a classic while still staying traditional. Plenty of women have been entranced by the princess cuts four sharp corners and high refraction rate. In 2015, it was estimated that about 20 to 30% of engagement rings sold in the last 10 years feature a princess cut diamond. A great selling point for princess cuts is the price tag. Rather, their smaller price tag, they carry a much smaller cost than the ever popular round. This is because gem cutters can get more bang for their buck out of a rough stone by making it square. Think about it. 
If a princess cut were to become a round, you'd have to lop off those corners. That's waste, bits of diamond just gone in order to get a circle. A good price comparison is that you can get a one carat princess for about the cost of an eighth of a carat round. So you can get a one carat for the cost of a 0.8 carat. So if you want a good amount of bling on a budget, the princess is for you. The third most popular diamond is a shape with its roots deep in history and its future is on the rise. At the intersection of where old meets new is the cushion cut diamond. The soft pillowy cushion cut we see today on the fingers of celebrities like Kim Kardashian West, Sofia Vargata, Gabrielle Union, and Miss Royal Meghan Markle, they owe its creation to a much older shape, the old mine cut. Back in the 1700s, when there was a lot of diamond mining happening in Brazil, the gem cutters of that time were looking for the best cut to maximize the sparkle from a rough diamond without losing too much of the precious material. The old mine cut is what they landed on. These hand cut stones were such a, they're just such a favorite of mine. They are full of personality. Nothing about them is uniform. They have a square-ish, rectangular-ish shape with rounded corners. I guess some people might call it like a squircle. And while it has 58 facets like a modern round, the facets are much larger, giving these stones more of a candlelight flash than a glittering disco ball vibe. The Hope Diamond is an old mine cut cushion to give you a point of reference. I love these stones. They are romantic and beautiful, and they were the most popular shape until the round brilliant came on the scene. The old mine cut faded out of use. People wanted the big time sparkle and bling that the round and other cuts could bring to their fingers. But in the 1980s, the gem cutters went back to the old mine cut designs and approached it with modern technology. And lo and behold, the modern cushion cut was born. The softness of the rounded rectangle shape appeals to whimsy and love with its longer sides speaking to structure and feeling safe and secure, a perfect stone to represent love. Besides its gorgeous shape, cushion cuts carry another layer of appeal. They're considered affordable. A one carat cushion cut diamond will cost about 25% less than a one carat round diamond because you guessed it, cutting waste. I mean, the old mine cut was designed to maximize yield from a stone, and the modern cushion cut is no different. It's beauty with a downright reasonable price tag. No wonder it's zooming up the popularity ladder. Last records state that about 8% of engagement rings in the last 10 years feature a cushion cut. But mark my words, you heard it here first. Princess cuts better watch out. The cushion is cruising for that number two spot. Round, princess, and cushion solidly dominate the diamond shape world. They make up about 90% of all engagement rings. But diamonds come in so many additional amazing cuts. The other 10% of engagement rings and um, any other thing you want to have a diamond in, a just because ring, a necklace, earrings, you could be having fun with a veritable playground of designs. I'm going to list as many as I can find because even their names are just great. Check out this lineup. Emerald, Oval, Pear, Asher, Marquis, Radiant, Heart, Portuguese, Trilliant, Baguette, Asprey, The 88, Ashoka, Jubilee, Chris Crut, Lily, Rose, Portrait, and Bead. I mean, <laughs> whew, three diamond shapes make up 90% of modern engagement rings. We have 19 other shapes crowding up the remaining 10%. This also isn't a conclusive list. There are several other really, really obscure shapes and some shapes that are officially branded to a gem cutting house so they aren't really publicly available. But let's talk about these cuts. They have some amazing unique qualities. Let's go down the list of some of these rarer shapes and their personalities.
you wouldn't think with the long, elegant rectangles of the emerald cut diamonds sitting on famous fingers like Beyonce, Amal Clooney, and Angelina Jolie that emeralds are a rare cut. But estimates place emerald cuts on less than 3% of engagement rings in the last 10 years. This sophisticated step cut was not originally designed for diamonds. It was for, as the name states, emeralds. Oh, emeralds. This tricky, soft, always included green gemstone has the annoying tendency to break and fracture when it's cut. Also, when you just wear it, like you should be careful, they're super fragile. The emerald cut with its long straight lines down the side was designed to minimize breakage for the fickle greenies. In the 1920s, with the Art Deco design boom, gem cutters turned the emerald cut pattern on diamonds and a classic was born. Emeralds are a different breed than rounds, princesses, or cushions. They're not playing the same game. They don't capitalize on sparkle. The long lines in them create more of a flash, a gorgeous hull of mirrors effect when you gaze into them. That's called a step cut. Because of their wide open top without little facets all over it, these nicknamed ice rinks need a high clarity rating so you don't peer down into them and see a black blemish marring your great view. But don't fear needing a high clarity that that's going to drive up your stone price. Because of the economical long step cuts, emerald diamonds, like a cushion, cost about 25% less than an equivalent round. So, perhaps you quite like the idea of a strong, powerful rectangle, but the clear windows of the emerald cut don't satisfy that innate human desire for sparkle. Well, drumroll please, let me introduce you to a personal favorite of mine, the radiant cut. I firmly believe the radiant cut is one of the best of all worlds cut in terms of historical cuts, though, the Radiant is a downright newbie. It's a baby. It was created in 1977 by a master gem cutter named Henry Grossbard. Henry challenged himself to create a cut that, quote, would unleash the full potential of a diamond's brilliance, unquote. The result is an amazing 70 facet long rectangle with provocative clipped corners. Remember, Every facet is an additional chance for sparkle. Rounds, princess, cushions, emeralds, and ovals have about 58 facets. So radiants have 70, 20% more glitter packed into their little rectangle bodies. Radiants are for women who embrace symmetry and balance and also inner fire. Basically, radiants combine the sparkle and dazzle of a round with the elongating elegance of an emerald. If I'm waxing poetic about radiants, it's because I just love them so much. The first radiant cut diamond I ever saw was Jennifer Lopez's 6.1 carat pink Harry Winston engagement ring from Ben Affleck. I had a subscription to People Magazine. My aunt got it for me and I would run home after school every Friday. And one day they did a feature on that ring. I remember tearing the pages out and I had the picture taped in my locker at school in 2002. I was in seventh grade. But 19 years later, my husband made my radiant cut dreams come true. My 10th anniversary ring features a radiant moissanite. I highly recommend. Okay. Enough. Let's transition from the bold, confident rectangle. What shape do you think makes you feel soft yet strong? One thing that stood out to me when I was researching was this shape is stated in multiple places to create a feeling of friendly completeness. Isn't that a lovely phrase? Friendly completeness. Well, this feminine happy shape is the oval. I love the story of how the modern oval cut came to be. A Russian-born gem cutter named Lazary Kaplan had been cutting diamonds since he was 13. He got an apprentice in a factory 
and he, he just went for it and he did it his whole life. He lived to be over a hundred. He had a reputation for taking diamonds that were deemed worthless because of their internal flaws. And he took all these castaways that no one thought could be worth anything. And he would find ways to cleave and cut them to make them beautiful and sparkling and desirable. He saw the beauty in things that other people thought were trash. In 1957, he turned his creative talents to perfecting an oval-shaped diamond that would face up larger than an equivalent round. That means a one-carat oval can look more like a one-and-a-quarter size stone. They look bigger than they actually are. The oval's 58 facets stretch elegantly down your finger, giving you tremendous visual bang for your buck. Recently, some designers are modernizing the oval cut further by setting the stone east-west, that is, putting it horizontally across a finger or hanging on a necklace chain instead of vertically. You can do this with emerald and radiant cuts as well for a fun, unconventional, personal customization. Anyway, the oval is a lovely, sophisticated shape. It does have one red flag to watch out for, except it isn't a red flag. It's a black bow tie. Sometimes poorly cut oval diamonds can exhibit, well, a literal black bow tie effect inside them. When you look down in them, you see two black triangles. It looks like a bow tie. It's not ideal. So be cautious if you order an oval stone off the internet. They are worth seeing in person to make sure it's not accidentally tuxedo casual with an unintended bow tie in your bling. So maybe you like the oblong shape, but the oval is just too soft for you, too gentle. You want that extended glamour going down your finger, but with a little more edge and drama. Well, okay, I'd like you to meet the sexy marquee cut. You might think a diamond shape with nicknames like the football or navette, which is French for little ship, or get this, some call it the canoe cut. <laughs> I mean, so maybe you'd think this cut wouldn't have a sexy origin story, but it does. It has to do with King Louis XV of France. Remember him? He's the king we talk about back in episode three of Tea and Gemstones, The Affair of the Diamond Necklace. This king liked his ladies and jewelry. He had a bunch of different mistresses at different times, and he liked to give them things. And in the 18th century, he commissioned his royal jeweler to design a brand new diamond shape that looked like the lips of his girlfriend. And voila, the marquee shape was born, named after his mistress's title in French court. It is a sparkly 58 faceted elliptical shape with pointy ends. It is traditionally set vertically, but it can be stunning set on its side. Google movie star Catherine Zeta-Jones engagement ring. It is an amazing 10 karat marquee diamond set east-west. Okay, check this out. The marquee has a really neat trick. It faces up larger than any other diamond shape. Because of its long, slender shape, it has a huge surface area without a lot of wasted carat weight on the bottom where no one can see it. For example, a three quarters of a carat well-proportioned marquee can look as big as one carat. So you can pay for three quarters of a carat and it'll look like a full solid one. However, it's not without one drawback. Like the oval, a marquee can sometimes wear an unplanned bow tie. But other than that, this is one sexy, sparkly football shaped diamond that is worth consideration. But perhaps the double pointed marquee is a little too bold for your liking, but the idea of a sharp, sexy point intrigues you. Well, there's a shape that blends together the classic traditional softness of a round with the seduction of the marquee. And that shape is the juicy pear. You might think this teardrop is a modern creation, but the pear is actually one of the oldest diamond cuts. It was created in 1475 by a Belgium gin cutter named Lodwick van Birken. Lodwick actually revolutionized the diamond world by inventing the modern diamond polishing wheel. 
His design uses a polishing wheel coated with olive oil and diamond dust that allows all facets of a diamond to be polished evenly. This new tool allowed for a boom in diamond cut design, but Lodwick used his invention to create the 58 facet pair cut, the first diamond cut to introduce the concept of absolute symmetry. The glittering teardrop was an instant success. People love pear cuts. Some of the most famous diamonds have been pear cuts. Elizabeth Taylor was gifted a 69 carat pear diamond necklace from her husband, Richard Burton, and she flaunted the necklace all over the world, like to Princess Grace of Monaco's birthday party and to the 42nd Academy Awards. In fact, the largest cut diamond in existence is a pear. It's called the Great Star of Africa. It's an epically huge stone, weighing in at five. 130 carats, and it's valued at $450 million. Big or dainty, pear-shaped diamonds are a highly personal preference. Because of their design, they can be kind of pudgier and more rounded or more lean and long. Picking the right pear stone for you definitely means there is no right or wrong, only what yummy pear version you personally are drawn to. So as the pair plays off being a combo of the marquee and the round, the radiant and oval mix qualities of cushion, emerald, and princess, but there is a diamond shape that stands totally apart, and that is the asher. The asher, I suppose you can say, is a blend of the square princess and the step-cut long facets of the emerald, but really the asher is in its own category. It is technically a square shape, but it does not have the sharp corners of a princess. The asher's corners are cropped, giving it its trademark octagonal shape. The cropped corners also allow more light to enter the stone. This shape's moniker comes from its maker, a Mr. Joseph Asher. He had founded his diamond cutting company in 1854 in Amsterdam. Mr. Asher was very very good at his job. He's actually the one who cut the Great Star of Africa that I just mentioned. Well, in 1902, Joseph Asher designed his special 58 facet octagon diamond shape. And then this savvy businessman did something no gem cutter had ever done before. He patented his design. That meant that no one else could legally cut a diamond into his Asher shape. When the roaring 1920s came around, about two decades later, the Asher diamond was embraced as the Art Deco darling of the era. The 1920s were a shift away from tradition and the geometric and modern lines of the Asher were right on trend. Joseph Asher's patent expired sometime after World War II and it opened up the design for any gem cutter to do it. However, this complex octagon design is notoriously difficult to execute well making the Asher a very rare cut to see just sitting out in a display case. They're usually custom ordered, but I hope you get the chance to see an Asher diamond one day in person. They are so charming. Rather than a disco ball of tiny sparkles, the Asher treats you to large flashes of clean white light. Gazing down into a well done Asher diamond is like falling into a beautiful hall of mirrors, but get this. So the original Asher diamond had the standard 58 facets. Well, Joseph Asher's great grandsons who work at his still thriving company in 2001 to celebrate 100 years of the Asher cut, his descendants released a brand new Asher cut, this time with a staggering 74 facets within the octagon. When the design was released, people were stunned. The company named the cut the Royal Asher, and it's been written up and described as an infinite mirrored pool of diamond. All right. I haven't seen a Royal Asher in person, but it's on my list. So if you're thinking of purchasing a pendant, rings, earrings, consider an Asher. This architectural diamond lends itself to those who crave balance and structure, yet are creative and romantic. Okay, well, those nine shapes are your foundation of 
diamond design. Round, princess, cushion, emerald, radiant, oval, marquee, pear, and asher. Granted, yes, there are so many more. Honestly, the more obscure and random they get, the more interesting I find them. Take, for instance, the 88 cut. It draws inspiration from Asian culture, which considers eight a lucky number. This octagon design has 88 facets, creating a swirly sparkle effect inside the stone. But if sparkle is your end-all be-all goal, you have to consider a Portuguese cut diamond. It has a truly amazing 161 facets. This cut is performed on deep round stones that have the surface area to yield all those 161 little sparkly slices. The end result is a disco ball. Some people call Portuguese diamonds kaleidoscope flowers. If the Portuguese is all sparkle, then portrait diamonds are the complete opposite. A portrait cut diamond is cutting a slice of diamond entirely flat without any facets at all. It is called portrait because in India, they used to put the clear diamond slices over tiny painted portraits of loved ones on their rings. Movie star Rooney Mara, her 2019 engagement ring from Joaquin Phoenix is a hexagon portrait diamond. Since I have such a personal fondness for rectangle diamonds, the last cut I want to mention is the ultra exclusive Ahsoka cut. The Ahsoka is a cushion emerald hybrid cut with an exceptional 62 facet design. The special facet layer requires a large clear stone. Not many diamonds meet the requirements to receive an Ahsoka cut. Get this, the minimum requirements for the cut is a diamond that is three carats or larger and internally flawless. But oh, oh how it's worth it. The stunning vertical pattern of the Ahsoka is like nothing else. And this cut allows a diamond to face up almost 50% larger than an equivalent emerald or radiant. If you want to Google and oogle a famous Ahsoka, check out Reese Witherspoon. She's lucky enough to sport a four carat Ahsoka engagement ring. Okay, I think it has accurately come across how much of a passion of mine gemstone shapes are. But y'all, I love how gem cutting marries together creativity and science. I imagine the gem cutters sitting in their workshops either hundreds of years ago, just a few decades past, or today, and they're examining rough diamond stones and contemplating what shapes they could create, and then the math and the technical skill required to bring that artistic vision to reality. It's just so cool. Sometimes it makes me a little sad. All these centuries of creativity and science and experimentation have ultimately just ended up in a world where 75% of people choose a white circle. Now, I understand the appeal of a round cut diamond. That's what my husband proposed to me with. I do. I picked it out. They sparkle. They're classic. They're pretty. A circle is a lovely symbol of eternity and never ending love. But for me personally, I'm in love with the idea of making a choice that's so much more tailored to like who you are and what you like. But the beautiful thing about an engagement ring, it is for one person. It does not have to please a crowd or match a trend. It is a beautiful, exclusive, utterly meaningful piece of jewelry to honor a commitment between two people. It should be exactly what you want. And the amazing thing about diamonds is there are so many shape choices out there. You can find exactly what sings to your soul. And I know I have talked about all these shapes, mostly in the context of engagement rings, but diamonds are not locked into applying only to a proposal. You can buy a just because I love it ring for any of the other nine fingers on your hand. How about a diamond pendant necklace or some amazing earrings in a pear teardrop or a princess cut tennis bracelet? Diamonds are for everyone and for every day. Life is an occasion. 
Surround yourself with beautiful gems that reflect your personality and what you love. I mean, all the shapes that we've talked about can be applied to other gemstones, not just diamonds. Hello, emerald cut looks amazing on actual emeralds. You can have a radiant cut sapphire, a pear cut topaz, a marquee aquamarine. Find the shape you love and get it in every color. Or find the color you love and get it in every shape. That's all for this episode of Tea and Gemstones. I hope you have thought more about how shapes make you feel than ever before. I honestly do hope you have an opinion. If you didn't before, I hope you have one now. Head over to Tea and Gemstones on Instagram and comment on the show post and let me know what shape is your favorite or not so favorite. Check out our show notes for a link to our website and the bibliography. Our website also hosts full transcripts for every episode if you want to go back and read through any episodes instead of listen. Our theme song is by Joseph McDade, and I, Jen, have been your enthusiastic host. Okay, everyone, until next time, stay sparkly.